GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene falsely cited HIPAA in refusing to say whether she's been vaccinated while Republicans fought with an ice cream company and said we should just learn to live with climate change. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and it's easy to look around at the state of things and get a slightly apocalyptic vibe. COVID cases have nearly tripled in two weeks thanks to a highly contagious new variant. Billionaires are jetting off to space as U.S. life expectancy saw its biggest drop since World War II. And thanks to intense wildfires on the West Coast, smoke blanketed parts of the country as far east as New York. Dozens of Western wildfires burning out of control, sending smoke as far east as New York City. Nearly 3,000 miles away, air quality in the Northeast, including here in New York City, was compromised due to smoke from those wildfires. The smoky infernos out west creating hazy skies thousands of miles away, stretching from Toronto to Philadelphia. The wildfires so strong in New York City, a plume of haze clouded the city skyline. I mean, this is pretty thick stuff. I mean, it was just draped across the Statue of Liberty. Oh my God, I mean, on a good day, breathing the air in New York City is like smoking Marlboro Reds in a railroad cattle car. You know how bad it has to be to notice the air quality in New York? That's like noticing a ketchup stain on a red couch. A thick plume of smoke turning the sun red and blanketing the Statue of Liberty. It's like the establishing shot in a sci-fi movie that takes place in a dystopian future after a nuclear war between humans and lizards. And I want to be the recluse scientist with a long gray beard who's been living on the top floor of the abandoned Empire State Building. And then the last surviving humans come to me and they ask about the formula I devised for filtering ash from the sky, which would allow the sun to break through and kill the lizards because they're from a different galaxy. Our sun is lethal to them. But I get upset because they're dredging up painful memories. Damn you for coming here, I'll say. Now leave me in peace while I clutch a framed photo of my late wife and listen to my Beatles LPs. And they'll say, please, is there anything we can do for you that might you change your mind? And I'll pause and I'll say, well, I've never seen Hamilton. And they'll say, it's still sold out. And I'll say, still? <laughs> Damn you, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Anyway, if you're intrigued by any of that little teaser, you can read the rest right here in my 600-page screenplay called Red Sun's Out, Space Guns Out. Now... <laughs> Probably due in part to the post-apocalyptic scenes of mass animal extinctions, deadly heat waves, flooded subway stations in New York City, smoke blanketing the sky and turning the sun blood red, and rings of fire in the Gulf of Mexico, Americans now list climate change as their second highest priority and at least one poll conducted by The Economist and YouGov. But if you're worried about it, good news, Fox News host Jesse Waters has a solution. Just live with it. If you want to stop climate change, you don't fight climate change. If it's getting warmer, you adapt to it. Let's just say the sea levels rise a couple inches over the next century, Harold. Okay. It's a great civilization we have here. I think we can adapt to that. The Netherlands, 25% below sea level. They're like a powerhouse in Europe. <laughs> they didn't just destroy their economy to fight the rise in the sea levels right there. They built reservoirs and kind of adjusted around the coastline, and they're fine. They didn't have to break the bank to do it. Yeah, just adapt to it. Who needs a cab when you could Uber a dolphin? Of course, the problem with Uber dolphins is they can't take a hint when you don't want to talk. So, are you from around here? Uh, yeah. Got plans for the weekend? Uh, what, sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of busy. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, you know where I could get some krill? Uh, nice try. But you don't eat krill, dolphin. Baleen whales do. You eat small fish. If you want to get into corrections, you gotta try harder than that. Wait, this is my stop. <laughs> Miami's bracing for two feet or more of sea level rise by 2060. What's Pitbull supposed to do? Move to Kansas? I don't think gasolina is gonna go over too well at the Leavenworth County Fair. Also, your Netherlands comparison only makes sense if sea levels stay exactly where they are right now forever, which is obviously not happening. That's why the government is aiming to make the Dutch economy almost completely carbon neutral by 2050. Those changes are necessary to avoid potentially catastrophic flooding that could sink low-lying areas. The lowest point in the country currently sits at nearly 22 feet below sea level. As sea levels rise as a result of climate change, the ground becomes comparatively lower, leaving large areas of the country even more vulnerable to catastrophic flooding. There's a limit to how low you can go. Experts are quite literally afraid parts of the country could become uninhabitable. With unprecedented sea level rise forecast as a result of climate change, the Dutch government is racing against the clock to figure out how to keep one of the world's richest countries from disappearing into the North Sea. As one Dutch professor of geosciences and physical geography put it, on the other end of the spectrum is controlled abandonment, which isn't nice because we somehow need to lead 
10 million people somewhere. And as soon as this gets known, as soon as hits the fan, there won't be any investments anymore and local economies will collapse. And when a Dutch professor uses the expression, hits the fan, you know the problem is real. And you know, I used to live in Amsterdam and I called a Dutch friend and I asked her, how would a Dutch person say, the hits the fan? And she said, we would say, the hits the fan because we all speak English and it's an American expression. And I said, yeah, 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 but how would you say it in Dutch? And she said, I don't want to do this. This is a waste of time. And I said, come on, just do it. It'll be funny. How would you say the hits the fan in Dutch? And she took a long beat and said, nu kommt de poop in de ventilator. And I said, and no one's time has been wasted a today. <laughs> so life expectancy is plummeting. A new variant of a highly contagious respiratory disease is surging and wildfire smoke has spread all the way around the U.S. Let's check in on Republican politicians and see what they're up to. Senator James Langford now calling on the state of Oklahoma to ban the sale of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. All of this came after Ben and Jerry's releasing a statement earlier this week saying that they will end the sale of their ice cream in the occupied Palestinian territory. Uh, Senator Langford tweeting out within the hour saying Ben and Jerry's has now decided they know more about Jerusalem than the Israelis. If Ben and Jerry's wants to have a meltdown and boycott Israel, Oklahoma is ready to respond. Oklahoma has an anti-boycott of Israel law in place. We should immediately block the sale of all Ben and Jerry's in the state and any state-operated facility to align with our law. Cool, they're fighting with ice cream now. What's next? You're going to accuse Mayor McCheese of voting twice in Arizona? You can't just ban Ben and Jerry's because you don't like their opinions. I mean, I still eat it, even though I'm annoyed they haven't given us our own flavor yet. It would be called a closer lick, and we've already mocked up what the container would look like. I sent this to them, and I've called their offices and left dozens of messages, and all that happened was one of their interns called me and said, we already have a flavor named after you. It's called vanilla. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but I assure you, if this doesn't work, then we will continue to at least try to get our own butter flavor called Landa Looks. I will have a personalized dairy product. So Republicans think they should have the power to ban an ice cream company if they don't like its politics, but when President Biden announced a targeted community outreach effort to send volunteers door to door and raise awareness about COVID vaccines, conservatives called it tyranny. And now they're starting to talk about going door to door to be able to take vaccines to the people. It, the think about the mechanisms they would have to build to be able to actually execute that massive of a thing. And then think about the, what those mechanisms could be used for. They could then go door to door take your guns. They could again that, go door to door take your Bibles. Yeah. Yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene um, tweeting this. Biden pushing a vaccine that is not FDA approved shows COVID is a political tool used to control people. People have a choice. They don't need your medical brown shirts showing up at their door ordering vaccinations. You can't force people to be part of the human experiment. Going door to door, this is creepy stuff. You know, someone comes up to your door outside wearing a mask, showing up at your house, claiming to work for the government asking you personal medical questions. Don't come knocking on my door with your Fauci outie. Maybe she thinks that's a Ben and Jerry's flavor. I wouldn't be surprised everyone gets one but me. <laughs> also, no one's knocking on your door with a COVID shot, although I wish they had. I mean, sure, now certain places like New York City will bring the vaccine to your house if you sign up for it. But back when the rest of us got ours a few months ago, we had to sit on our computers all day for weeks, refreshing eight different websites, looking for a random open slot at a pharmacy at 3 a.m. in a neighborhood we'd never heard of before. Honey, I got one. It's a pharmacy called Drugs Plus in Upper Coney Island West. I guess I have to take the George Kennedy Bridge to get there? Is this real? No poles, Shoemaker, on the George Kennedy Bridge. You just have to eat uh, 50 hard-boiled eggs in an hour. <laughs> you can do it, Shoemaker. <laughs> so according to Republicans, they should be able to ban an ice cream company they don't like, but going door to door to raise awareness about life-saving vaccines is tyranny. On Tuesday, Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene was asked by a reporter if she had personally been vaccinated, given that she continues to lie and spread dangerous misinformation about COVID vaccines. What Scalise said today he got vaccinated, citing this Delta variant that's going around, and said he's confident that it's safe and effective. Two questions. Have you yourself gotten vaccinated, and do you disagree with the Republican whip? Well, your, your first question is a violation of my HIPAA rights. You see, with HIPAA rights, uh, we don't have to reveal our medical records, and that also involves our vaccine records. No, that's not a thing. A reporter asking you if you've been vaccinated doesn't violate your HIPAA rights any more than a neighbor needs a warrant to enter your house for a barbecue. HIPAA establishes national standards to protect your medical records. It doesn't stop journalists from asking you questions. She probably also thinks Miranda rights means she doesn't have to visit 
visit her friends in Manhattan anymore after she moves to Brooklyn with Steve's. Should we just stay in the night and watch a movie? Steve was my audition for Impression Camp. <laughs> they said, do one where we won't know if it's good. I doubt she even knows what HIPAA is or what it stands for. She probably doesn't even know it's an acronym. Asking me if I've been vaccinated violates my HIPAA rights, and asking me if I've been to the zoo violates my HIPAA rights, and asking me if any of my siblings are royalty violates my HIPAA rights. <laughs> and then, today, Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson jumped in with what he apparently thought was a brilliant comeback to reporters asking Republicans if they've been vaccinated. Yeah, I was just going to uh, chime in and say, I think that you as a press have a responsibility to ask questions of the Democrats as well. How many of the Democrats are willing to say whether or not they've been vaccinated? Hey, remember that guy, Dr. Ronnie, the guy who said Trump had the IQ of a chess wizard and the build of a college linebacker? You know, the guy who was allegedly known as the candy man because he dished out pills like the Phoenix Suns gorilla giving out t-shirts at a home game. Whenever he handed out a prescription, this played. <laughs> I'm sure you at least remember the name Dr. Ronnie, a name that sounds less like an actual medical doctor and more like a guy who plays jazz flute in a fedora and invites you to get sky high with him in his yurt outside Reno. Anyway, what are you talking about? You don't think Democrats are willing to say if they've been vaccinated? I'm pretty sure they all walk around with their CDC cards scotch taped to their foreheads. I mean, what else are we going to do with that thing? I thought I was going to have to show it everywhere I went, like a reporter flashing a press badge at a crime scene. And now I'm thinking of taking it out of my wallet to make room for something more useful, like my Hollywood video card. There's a through line here between COVID and climate change. In both cases, the right has decided the best course of action is to just let disaster happen and scare people about any government attempt to stop it. And while some in the GOP advocate for vaccines, other loud voices like Green continue to spread lies about them. They've sunk so low, they're basically 25% below sea level. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses. And they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe. Get vaccinated. We love you.